hello everyone uh thank you all the people who are joining us online at this time uh we are very happy to have you all here um and we expect to have a good attendance uh so thank you all who are on time for this uh, so my name is sebastian castellanos um let me just put my camera here quickly um uh, i'm the research lead for numo the new urban mobility alliance and we're very happy to welcome you to this webinar series of resilience and transportation uh for this first uh series uh, this first webinar on the series uh we have the cities of santiago of buenos aires and of bogota uh in particular we have juan carlos gonzalez lucila capelli and sergio um, martinez who will be talking a bit about some of their strategies that they have been using uh to deal with this pandemic um and uh we will have a you know a brief discussion at the end uh, about how this has changed their plans um, on resilience and how this you know will uh, inform whatever is coming next so again for this series uh we are very very happy to be partnering with giz the german government to me uh euroclima and mobilizer city uh we are again very very happy to be starting this today um and please stay tuned for uh the following series for the following webinars in our series which will be happening every two weeks uh, so you, you will be hearing from us about uh, the next one. Um, so if you all agree with that, our panelists, I'm just going to go ahead and start. Um, so we will be starting uh, the first presentation uh, by Lucila Capelli from the, the city of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, Lucila is the Undersecretary of Mobility Planning uh, for Buenos Aires. Uh, Lucila has a bachelor's degree in political science uh, from the Univers Universidad de Buenos Aires, um, and she has uh, postgraduate studies from the U Universidad de San Andres and the University of Leeds. Um, so, Lucila, I'm just going to hand it over to you. Uh, finally, you know, the last thing I would say before uh, passing it on to you is that I've had, you know, the great opportunity of working with all our panelists in different capacities. Um, so, we really have, you know, a very, very um, you know, very good panelists today that will be sharing some of their experiences. Um, and again, I'm just really happy to be able to work again with you guys on this. So thank you uh, for, for being a uh, part of this uh, opportunity. So I'm going to hand thank it over you. to you, Lucille. Okay, thank you. Um, I will present what we are doing uh, regarding transportation in Buenos Aires City. I would like to thanks to the institutional team of the Secretary, Secretary of Transport and Public Works for the presentation. Because of the crisis, I didn't have time. So thank you to Juliet and Dana that I think they are online. Um, this presentation is a, is, is a long presentation, so uh, but it's a, like a guideline, so we can share this information to everyone after the, the meeting. I will try to skip some slides in order to respect the, the 10 minutes. Um, so in Argentina, we have uh, nowadays 200, uh, 300 cases. Um, I think this is the yesterday uh, statistics. We started with the, the first week that was in the middle of March that to reduce the um, the trips around the metropolitan area. It's very important um, to highlight that Buenos Aires City is around uh, 3 million inhabitants, but we have around uh, 15 inhabit inhabitants in the metropolitan area. So we are a massive city and the, our problems are very huge. So we start in the middle of March, as you can see in this a slide uh, with the reduction of the circulation of people. That was, uh, this is all the national measures that were taken. National government, we are a federal government, so um, it's, uh, it took a lot of measures and then also were taken by, by us in the city level. Um, we suspended classes, schools and universities. We promote the remote working um, not only for the public sector but also for the uh, private sector we close the vibrant um, cultural life of buenos aires so we close theaters cinemas and all that 
we suspend all the intercity movements, buses and flights, and we close the borders for the international flights also. We only have um, flights of uh, repatriation. That was the first 10 days be, uh, before the quarantine. And since the 23 of March around, we are in a strong quarantine where all the people must stay at home, uh, work at home, study at home, uh, except of the essential activities that we know that are around of 8,000, uh, 800,000 people around the Buenos Aires and the, and the people from the suburbs of Buenos Aires that came work to the city and are, are the health system, transportation, and all the essential activities. Here you will see all the measures that the Buenos Aires city uh, implements. I will talk about them in more detail then. And this is the definition of the phases that the Ministry of Health uh, design. Uh, we are still in the orange um, side of the graph, uh, thank God. Uh, so we are working with two big dim dimensions, that is the rate of infections and the capacity of the health uh, system. And all the decisions are taken by the Ministry of Health and the supporting areas as transportation are implementing uh, strategies uh, regarding the, the 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 where we are in in this in this graph. So we have two phases. Uh, we have three three stages or or three uh, phases in in Buenos Aires and in the metropolitan area. The first one was the disincentivation of trips that was in the first days uh, was one month ago, but it seems to be one year, then the quarantine, that is the phase two, and then the phase three, that is the future on the or the next weeks that we are planning. In the first phase one, we implement five main uh, strategies, that is the, we maintain the public transport offer, that, that was very difficult because Buenos Aires City, it, uh, that's an, uh, we only have uh, under our administration the, the subways, but uh, buses and trains are under national government administration. So we need a huge uh, coordination with, with them to, man to maintain the transport offer. Um, we start this, we giving um, this, uh, we, we start to desensitize the demand also and we can explain that in more detail. Also the rush hours, and we start promoting alternative uh, transport modes. That includes, of course, the bikes and the, and the walking, but also, and that is, uh, was difficult for us, but we, we start promoting the free parking in the city to promote the, the car or the car sharing alternatives. And also we start to restrict the access to the public transport in order to guarantee the social distance. Uh, I Here is more detail about how we work to maintain the offer. Um, and here is the measures we start to implement in order to desensitize uh, demand. What's very important to start talking about here you will see in, the, in this graph um, the reasons why the people is traveling on public transport in, met, in the metropolitan area. Employment 46%, studies 21%. So we start um, for each uh, reason we start uh, we have different measures. Rush hours was mostly a communicational policy to start saying to the people not to travel or to avoid travel uh, during the rush hours. Uh, we promote the alternative modes uh, with free parking um, in all the city and also environmental area in the central in the central part of Buenos Aires. We took all the restrictions and. Uh, 
we have a, with the national government, we have a restrictions to access to the transport that is only people, um, only people sit can be in public transport, public transport. That means that we reduce the capacity of transport units a lot. In Southway, we have a reduction of the 73% of the capacity per, per transport unit and in uh, buses around the 64% of reduction of capacity per unit. That means a huge uh, challenge for the offer of public transport and the, we need to promote also different offers of mobility. The results, because I have not, not a lot of time, I, I like the, a lot this graph because it, it shows how the demand uh, was during the last month and months, around one month. The gray side is when we start to reduce the circulation and you will see an important reduction of the use of public transport, uh, not of cars, but yes, of public transport. And the yellow side is the quarantine, and the, and there you will see a historical uh, demand of public transport. Uh, we have a 95% of reduction uh, of demand in subways, so we are living in a historical moment. So we are now uh, at the end of the of this graph. Uh, we are still in phase two. Uh, this is more detail of all what we are doing and communication. We are also working to um, in bus stop, but bus stops and uh, subway stations to with the demarcation of the social distance. This is a very huge program that we were working. And um, so in order to explain the end of this graph, that is the yellow one, I will explain uh, what we were doing in transportation. We maintain the um, we maintain the offer. The first two weeks we go we went to a subway offer uh, a, a Sunday offer of transportation, but now we are in a in a uh, normal offer that is around we are around in the 95 percent of the the offer of transportation we um a, a taxis and also um yes ride sharing is is, is available but we we suspend um a public bicycles um scooters um parking so because we don't want the people to be around in the city uh, we also close the uh, 59 uh, point of access uh, of the city and we are having a very strong controls of security uh, in all the access to the city um, so I, I have no time we are also working to give a logistics to the health system uh, in order to have more capacity we are uh, using taxis that are not with a lot of work uh, these days and they are going to be um, sanitary vehicles to transport people with uh, um, uh, with coronavirus uh, from the hospitals to isolation so we are using the our capacity of the transportation system in order to uh, provide logistics to the health uh, system. This is an example. We are also with the uh, scholar buses. We are also um, we are also adopting these buses for um, transport in uh, inside the slums of coronavirus um, uh, cases. And the uh, phase three, that is the last one and it didn't start yet we are trying to work with the which are gonna be the first uh, workers and activities that are gonna restart working in the next weeks because economy is gonna is starting to pressure a lot to to recover uh, so we are working with uh, uh, changing um, 
starting times of some activities, uh, changing moda, uh, modal shift of some activities, promoting a lot uh, of uh, moving in bicycle and walking for less than five, kilom five kilometers distances. And uh, so we are working very hard, uh, not, not only the transportation area, but also all the city, Buenos Aires city government with the national government and the province to for the next step that is phase three that we are going to restart some activities that are essential for for the economy so i will give you all this presentation that is very long and and, and very deep in the information and i will be here for any question thank you excellent uh thank you lucila that was very very useful um just so people know we have a q a section in go to webinar so if you have any questions please type them there and we will be able to answer them in the second part of the webinar um so let's move now uh to santiago so juan carlos gonzalez head of staff of the ministry of transport and telecommunications in chile uh juan carlos is an expert in transport regulation from the university of chile uh he used to be legislative head of the ministry of transport of chile between 2010 and 2014 um, and um, has been also been manager of Transurbano Foundation, an NGO dedicated to sustainable public transport. Um, as I mentioned, he's currently the head of staff of the Chilean Ministry of Transport and Telecommunications, um, and he works very closely with the current minister, uh, Mrs. Gloria Hutt. Um, so, Juan Carlos, uh, what did you tell us a bit about some of the um, of your own experiences and what you have been doing uh, in Chile and in Santiago in particular? Okay. Uh, please, the next slide. Uh, thank you. This is a, um, a scope about the, the dimensions of our system. Uh, our system is called Trans Santiago or RED, is the, the new name of the system. Uh, we have uh, the, the numbers that you can see in the, in the slide. Uh, I will try to remark uh, 4.6 4 million of uh, trips now. Um, and um, 7 million habitants and six bus operators with metro and urban rails. Next, please. And this is the composition of uh, our system. Um, you can see the numbers, the uh, 6,700 uh, 6, buses uh, with 26,000 workers for the, the, this composition of trips, uh, 3 million in, in buses and 2.3 million in metro. No? Uh, it's an integrated system. No? The, the, the system is fully integrated at 100% uh, uh, between uh, metro, uh, buses and uh, the urban rail. Next, please. Um, the, the measures. Uh, Adopt, adopt for the authority. Uh, uh, the, the, the first one and the, the main is uh, a declaration of a state of emergency in the Chile law that calls a state of catastrophe, no, estado de catastrophe, and it means uh, the, the, the long the, the time of this state is 90 days, no, and it starts in the middle of March and in 15 March 15. And it lasts until July 15. No, July 15. So uh, it, it the the that that measure means um, a lot of restriction, uh, the isolation of groups, um, some efforts for the health infrastructures, the suspensions of of classes in the schools and universities, and all the massive events and and all the shopping centers. Um, a set of special laws to make the to flexibilize flexibilize the labor relationship, uh, especially thinking about the the work from home or teletrabajo. We call them, it's, I don't know what's the, the correct translation, but um, and some section regimes and 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 the most important for us is to ensuring the the supply chain. Uh, and the uh, food and medicines and maintaining the operation of, of public transport. Uh, so the the equation uh, with uh, 
to sustain the offer of mobility with uh, a, a, a very decrease, decreasing of the trips is difficult. No? The next slide, please. The effects of that measures and that situation in the in the transport uh, system. Excuse me. Are you here? Okay. We have a problem with the, <laughs> excuse me, we have a problem in the, in the connection. So, um, the, the measures in transport sectors is uh, sustain the, the offer of public transport, sanitation. It's, it's, a, it's very similar to the Argentina and the Buenos Aires uh, measures that, that described Lucila before. Um, but uh, I would like to remark the, the exceptional financial government for transport contracts, you no? Know? Because uh, we have to maintain, to sustain the offer of buses specifically and metro, uh, but we don't have uh, the same income that, that is usual uh, because the, the trips are, uh, we have no, the hump, uh, uh, 15 or 20% of the demand that, that is the usual demand of a working day. So we adapt the programs to the summer levels, you know, uh, and, and we have some, some um, modifications in the contracts to maintain the income of the companies. You know? So um, and I would like to remark that they were working with the health authority with a DRT uh, service for the service health services personnel no um maybe in the, in the q a we can uh, have a, a deep discussion about this uh, the next one please so uh, we have some impact in the in the transport authority also um because um, the the behavior of our uh, personnel of our staff is changed uh, but for the situation, no, uh, we have a, a, a curfew, and we have a quarantines and, 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 and kind of dynamic quarantines, no, that's uh, closing some sectors of the city, and the sector where where our offices are located is a closed se sector, no, it's the, it's the downtown of Santiago, so we have a massive work at home. Uh, we install uh, quickly a digital system to approve the documents. Uh, on the formal acts, administrative acts are made by the digital way. Um, we have to, to take a, a lot of uh, information to the people because we have some episodes of crowding in, in metro stations and the problem it was the information to the people specifically. No? Um, we have a concern, some concerns about the, the road safety because uh, the, the streets are empty, the, the speeds are increasing. So uh, and the people in a, an emotional state, a special state of, of, of his, his emotions, and, and we have some accidents, no? Uh, we're, we're, we're very lamentable. Um, and we have a close coordination with the Ministry of Health, Economy, and, and Inland, no? Inland is a yeah, home office, no? Um, so uh, because Everything is happening very quickly. You know? We don't have a lot of time to the planification of the studies or some. Um, we have to make decisions very quickly. You know? So the, the coordination with the authority is very important. Next, please. And some lessons we have the, from the crisis at the moment because uh, we're, we're not in the peak of the crisis, we think. We, we, in, uh, today we have. 8,300 uh, contagious people, and we have and the and the the 50 percent if, if from Santiago, no, um, and in the country we have 8,300 and 50 percent in Santiago, and we have 
94 uh, people that passed away uh, and, uh, and 41 are, are from Santiago. No? So some lessons that we have at the moment is um, get the, the regulated uh, contracts, the, the contracts of the sector, transport sector are uh, permits an, and faster reaction to the for the authority and, and, and we have some agreements to sustain the offers public transport. In in the regions difference from Santiago, we don't have that system of regulated contracts and the offer of public transport had decreased very dramatically, you know, because there there is no trips trips. So uh, it's very difficult to sustain the the, the offer with that model. You know? um, uh, the, the the maintenance of the supply chains also is very important. We have some uh, sanitary customs and, and sanitary controls, and the, the usually the all the operators of the of the freight transport are uh, out of these controls, or or, or or we have that preference in in the roads. No, um, the technology is an ally, no, uh, a very important ally. Uh, we have the, the ambition to 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 put on on, on function some apps for control of the the, uh, the movement of the people that have contagions no like the like it happens on madrid no or korea no uh, so uh, the the technology is very important to inform the people because all the all, everything happens uh, very quickly so uh, if you put some metro stations on operation or suspend some services or some times of, of the services, you have, you have to inform the, the population. No? Um, and the public subsidies can collaborate with the subsistence of the companies in, in the crisis moment um, because we, we have the regulated contracts. No? Um, because the, in the in the future, in, in three or four months, maybe uh, we have a normalization of the activities. But we have we, we need the the public system, public transport system, no. Um, and surely, uh, when we we return it to the normality, uh, this this that will be the same, no. Probably the the some people uh, will take the the position of uh, work from from home. Uh, I, we don't know. Who, uh, what will happen with the classes of the students is maybe some classes uh, or some courses uh, will, will be made from um, e-learning, no? So probably we don't have the same quantity of people in the, in the streets, no? And the, and the transport have to uh, customize from, from this, no? Um, this is uh, our report to, to this webinar. Uh, thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Juan Carlos. Uh, this is excellent. I already have a ton of questions to ask the both of you, but uh, we're going to finish the presentations with Sergio, Sergio Martinez. Uh, he's the Undersecretary of Public of uh, Mobility Policy and the Mobility Secretary in Bogota. Uh, so Sergio is a civil engineer from the uh, Universidad Industrial de Santander. He has a master's degree in urban and regional planning from University of Texas. Um, and civil engineering with emphasis on transportation from uh, the University of Texas in Austin. Um, so again, uh, I have I've had the opportunity to work with Sergio in the past in um, topics related to mobility and in particular to bike sharing and scooter sharing. So really eager to hear uh, what you have to tell us from Bogota, Sergio. Yep, that's good. Uh, we can't hear you though. Okay. You have sound now? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, good. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, thank you, Juan Carlos and Lucila. Thank you, Nomo, for the invitation. And thank you, everybody attending this invitation. Um, you know, like Juan Carlos was saying, uh, 
this is a catastrophe. You know, this is, it's, it's really crazy. Uh, so I'm glad to see that uh, most of the things that we've been doing are uh, being implemented also by another uh, leading cities in a region. It's, uh, it's been complicated, but you know, uh, these sort of opportunities to share knowledge are very valuable. And so here, I think a little different um, than in most other cities, in Bogota, we had the chance to do a drill before going into quarantine, before going into uh, citywide lockdown. I think that was a really smart decision made by our mayor. Um, this was before the national government declared the quarantine. And so basically my presentation is gonna be uh, separated into these three parts. What was the drill? What is the lockdown that we are in right now? And what do we think is gonna happen or what are we trying to make happen after the city you know, starts reopening again. This is a quote uh, by the Secretary of Mobility, and this pretty much defines everything that we've been doing you know, these past weeks, and this is what's gonna continue in our motto, and is we really need to try everything that we can. If we fail, if we made mistakes, it's understandable, it's okay. We're just gonna try to fix it next time. So first, I'm going to talk about the drill. The drill lasted four days. The purpose was, you know, uh, of course, like everybody else is doing, to implement social distancing, but also to prevent mass movements of people and panic shopping. Because, you know, uh, we saw it coming that the national government it was going to implement um, the quarantine for the whole country. So basically, the drill was telling people, you know, you need to stay home unless you are, you know, uh, working on health or do you need to go out as a patient or do you provide special care to people? Like, for example, people that take care, takes care of elders or, you know, uh, somebody with special needs and a few other categories of people, like, for example, essential public sector employees. And I want to highlight the word essential because Everybody that is not essential, we were sent home. Of course, we work from home, but you know, um, the idea was, of course, to give example at all the public entities and to really start doing uh, work from home. And of course, all the security apparatus, not only the official, you know, police and military, but all the security agencies that provide security services to companies, uh, residential complexes, etc. So. We've been doing many different uh, restrictions and giving a lot of exceptions. So I'm just gonna try to summarize uh, some of the most important or the ones that have been uh, more controversial, I guess. So basically the city closed, you know, uh, it was defined a certain category of trips that were allowed, basically to get food, to, get, uh, to go to a pharmacy, to take out your pet, and very importantly, it was defined that only one person per household will go out to do that. It was very important and it was highlighted everywhere and in every discussion that we needed to guarantee the supply chain of everything. Because, you know, we've been seeing, of course, the toilet paper mania around the world and the hand sanitizer craziness. And so it was very important, not only that we actually guarantee the supply chain, but that people knew that there were not going to be any shortages of anything. And um, I guess different that in the US, in, in, in other countries, we do have regularly a type of delivery services from restaurants that is very prominent. Um, I know some other cities are starting to get this as well, uh, the Rappi kind of things. And those were allowed too, because it was determined that it was preferred that the majority of the people stayed home and just call uh, for these delivery people to bring food or uh, medical services or whatever it was needed. We started monitoring the occupation of public transportation um, very heavily. Different than other cities, uh, we, have, we have an issue and is that our operators are private. And so it's different, you know, when you own the buses basically as a city and you just make all the decisions. Here, you need to go and talk to them of course they understood, but 
uh, there were some problems in trying to adjust exactly how we should run the system, kind of like uh, the way that Buenos Aires mentioned, Lucila mentioned. We started testing if we operated with the coverage of a Sunday or, or of a holiday, and then we really needed to make adjustments there. We established cleaning protocols, not only for buses, but also for taxis and for all the delivery people. And of course, you know, uh, we had to send the police out to, uh, to control and sadly to issue fines to people that were not, you know, uh, acting accordingly to the restrictions. And like many other cities, we did a lot of advertising, uh, telling people to stay home and wash their hands frequently, you know, all the other uh, considerations that you all know. And there was something particular. This drill happened, started on a Friday, then Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, because that Monday was a holiday. And so it's very traditional that when we have a holiday, a lot of people from Bogota go out to the surrounding municipalities. And even though the mayor was very clear and said, nobody's allowed, everybody should stay at home, well, you know, a lot of people left. And then there was, a, there was a debate on whether we should let those people come back or not. You know, there was, there was uh, on social networks, there was a lot of discussion on where the city should, you know, quote, punish these people for not following the recommendations, especially because they will go to rural areas in which, you know, the, the, the medical services are, of course, weaker than in Bogota. And so at the end, it was decided that they were going to be allowed to return, but um, we split how they return for private vehicles. It was depending on their ending number on their uh, vehicle's plate. One day, odd numbers, the other day, even numbers. And we set up different time frames for uh, the coming of uh, intermunicipal buses and also for freight trucks. And something that I think was very interesting is that, uh, and this is what you're seeing in the picture, the people in the cars were allowed to uh, re-enter the city only if they fill out this form. This format, you know, of course has no uh, legal authority or any way to be enforced in any way, but it was, it, it basically had two goals. One, to help us to understand why they left, you know, why even though they were told not to leave, they decided to do it. And this was thinking on, you know, how are we gonna uh, improve our restrictions and our exceptions looking forward but the other the other reason was to you know kind of like give them slap in the hand it's like hey you were told not to leave why did you leave now you have to at least sign this you have to give me this per vehicle with all the information that uh, of all the people uh, that are coming back in your vehicle and you have to sign it you have to sign a compromise that you're going to respect the quarantine Again, you know, this has no way to be enforced, but it was more like a social exercise. And then um, this drill was uh, citywide. It was only uh, established for Bogota, although the surrounding state, uh, the governor decided to join efforts and pretty much apply the same restrictions, but not for the rest of the country. And so at the end of the drill, the president actually decreased uh, decree the national quarantine and so they overlap uh, so that's what i'm saying here now we're talking national most of the measures measures and exceptions that we established during the drill in bogota were maintained you know again tv remain closed except for freight to maintain uh, the supply of products and with some exceptions and we also started playing with other things. And, and I'm gonna be talking a little more about the bicycle lanes later, but basically uh, as of right now, we created an additional 35 kilometers of temporary bicycle lanes. We've been operating uh, the public transportation system at you know, roughly 50% of, uh, of the capacity for both BRT and the more zonal feeder buses. Taxis are allowed, but since we don't want them just like, you know, uh, circling around the city, we put a restriction on that their trips could only be held either by phone or by app. And um, the latest uh, and biggest change that we made is that we set up a restriction based on gender on when you could go out 
for those allowed trips. Like if you need to go and get groceries, now there's one day for women and one day for men. This has been, you know, like everything pretty much uh, controversial. But the reason it was uh, decided to do it like this instead of like, for example, based on their um, on their ending number on the our national document, our cellula, it's because we wanted to avoid uh, the police having to call people, you know, get close to people, ask them and exchange the document. So it was easier to just, you know, see if it's a man or a woman. Uh, of course, if you're transgender, you can go out based on your gender uh, definition of yourself. But, you know, nevertheless, uh, that started a few days ago and has been controversial. Uh, just one, uh, something that I think is kind of funny. It's, uh, of course, men disrespect this a lot more than women. Uh, we have to give out, uh, I think 610 fines yesterday to men for disrespecting their allow day. Going back to bicycles, uh, you know, uh, Juan Carlos and Lucina mentioned this, we really need to continue promoting sustainable transportation. And because uh, I guess the main, the main way that we're trying to avoid infections is by keeping social distance, the bicycle really has been uh, setting up itself as uh, probably the most hygienic way to move in the city. And before we started the drill, like we saw that coming and we started playing. Um, I'm sure most of you know that in Bogota, we have a Sunday Ciclovia, which is pretty much closing on about 120 kilometers of uh, roads to cars. And so we started doing that during regular days. Of course, um, we were testing and measuring everything. And uh, I think it's important that we took a trial and error uh, approach, like I mentioned before, that that's the motto for my sec our secretary. And on day two, you know, when we tried to implement the whole network, we really had uh, severe congestion problems. And so we scaled back. This was before the drill. Now, during the actual lockdown, we set up in uh, what we're seeing right now, it's uh, working for everybody, which is about 35 kilometers, but, we're planning already on uh, adding another 45 temporary. And most importantly, we're thinking about how to make those temporary lanes into permanent lanes. This has been challenging, of course. Uh, we've been doing it with traffic cones. And uh, sadly, some people like to steal uh, our cones. Also because, you know, private vehicles like to invade uh, the temporary bike lanes. And a problem that was mentioned as well uh, and that we're seeing in our cities is that empty streets are equaling higher speeds, which obviously is not what we want. So we're trying to you know, balance everything. But in general, we've had uh, really good feedback, not only from our users our, and our non-users, but also you know, we've actually got some courage on the, on the news media around the world, which kind of like surprises. But um, the important thing is that we're seeing progress. We're trying to find the sweet spot. And like I said, we're trying to make all those temporary kilometers into permanent ones. Another thing that we did is uh, we're trying to tweak our bus system. You know, we've been creating special routes that connect to hospitals to take the people that work there. Um, you know, here are just some examples of the flyers with the details. And I think our overall purpose, which was to reduce the number of trips, have largely been accomplished. You know, you see some pictures of our empty streets. And here we see a comparison on a typical day uh, versus um, drill and lockdown days on how we're seeing the demand for uh, our massive or formerly massive transportation system. So I think we're, you know, we're getting there. We're, we're finding the sweet spot. This, of course, uh, we don't know when, but it's, uh, we need to start reopening, right? It's unsustainable to keep the city like this. Um, unfortunately, for example, in Colombia, we have a very large number of people that uh, get their income from informal activities, right? So they've been suffering a lot and there's a lot of pressure, uh, not only from them, but all, uh, also from the, you know, the private sector to start reopening. 
And so we're trying to think of what that means, how are we going to do that? But more importantly, and, and this is what's going to be, I guess, you know, really a lot more difficult, it's what is it going to be our new normal? You know, and this is something that when Carlos was mentioning too. After all these months, you know, whenever we got the vaccine or, or even before that, we really need to find a new normal and that's surely going to be very different. So what is it that we're trying to uh, imagine here? Because, you know, it's, it's really complex. There are many variables. Basically, we really need to continue prioritizing sustainable modes, although, you know, maybe in a different way. We really need to continue testing, especially getting feedback from the users and adjusting based on that. And everything needs to be under the framework of very strict health and safety protocols, which pretty much means, you know, social distancing, right? So some ideas um, right now, everything, you know, of course is under construction, but we're thinking on some of these lines. We really need to rethink the whole system. We really need to rethink the network and we need to start um, kind of like, you know, identifying opportunities and, and trying to make this into something good somehow. What are we talking about? Rethinking mobility. We really need to reduce the occupancy in public transport. Uh, this, is, this is very difficult. You know, we've been working for, I don't know, 20 years and we really have to get this massive uh, transportation system. And now we need to somehow, I don't even think this is a word, but on, on massify massive transportation. We really need to push shared mobility, you know, carpooling and things like that. But here, here, there's a bit of a dilemma, you know, because we've been told that we need to be uh, apart from each other, like at least one meter. But then here we're telling them to go together in cars. So like, for example, that's an internal discussion that we have right now. It's should we promote HOV, but what is that? HOV two, HOV three? It should be maximum capacity of your vehicle minus one. Who knows? And, and this is what's going to be kind of problematic. And we're seeing this already. You know, the car manufacturers, the motorcycle manufacturers are really seeing a good opportunity here to promote the product, you know, because we've been telling them, everybody's telling them, everybody's telling us that we really need to be apart. We really need to enforce social distance. So what's the best way, you know, solo trips on motorcycles, solo trips on vehicles. And that's exactly what we do not want, right? As in the sustainable transportation world. So this is, this is the balance that we need to find. And of course, continue uh, redistributing public space. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, efforts in different cities by um, really doing uh, tactical urbanism, just basically stealing lanes from cars and giving it to sidewalks, temporary sidewalks, temporary bicycle lanes, like what I was mentioning. And of course, this is going to be a significant uh, part of what we're trying to implement here. Resilient network. You know, um, at the end of last year and beginning of this year, Colombia suffered, uh, not at the same scale, but something similar to what happened in Santiago and many other countries with the uh, massive protest of people and people blocking our system and really, really causing severe delays and problems to the rest of the people that were not participating in this, uh, uh, in this march. And so we really need to rethink our network and try to make it more resilient to all these emergencies, be a natural disaster or uh, a marching of people, you know, whatever. And we really need to make it more flexible, which I'm talking about again here about the temporary bike lanes, temporary sidewalks, you know, everything that we can, that we can implement fast. And the last part is we're really trying to think this into an opportunity to accomplish things that maybe were not happening the way that we wanted. For example, encourage um, local manufacturing of cycling, uh, development of uh, massive armies of bicycle mechanics, you know, things like that, the national e-bike industry, or uh, 
you know, anything related to selling, maintaining, repairing, and using bicycles in any way, cargo bicycles, everything. We really need to uh, stimulate those industries because we're really trying to make this, uh, well, hopefully, um, the main mode of transportation in the city. Other things like, for example, encourage road maintenance uh, for bike lanes and things like that. And like I said, basically, all this is under construction, but uh, I guess they all the bottom line here is that we're trying to think into how do we make this into an opportunity. And uh, that's all, that's what I had for today. Thank you. Excellent, thank you, Sergio. So it's super interesting. A um, lot of actions being taken by Bogota right now. Uh, so we have 10 minutes left. Uh, we have over 330 participants right now and many, many questions. So of course we won't be able to go through all of your questions, but we're gonna try to group them uh, into the most uh, relevant ones. Uh, for, perhaps I'll just start with a question, um, you know, before everyone, before we actually kicked off this webinar, we were just discussing about how uh, it's been really challenging for the three of you because you've been, you had to take decisions in a very, very fast manner, uh, which of course it's not the, the norm. Uh, so perhaps, you know, each of you can talk just a minute about how do you think this is going to change the way you take decisions in the future? Um, and is this something that obviously no one could have predicted this, but is this something that you had some plans before this uh, or, you know, any way of taking faster decisions and making, you know, um, to, to adjust very quickly to all these challenges that we've been facing? So perhaps I'll start with you, Lucila. You want to tell us a bit about, about that? Um, you're muted, Lucida. You're still muted, maybe. Um, okay, there you go. I think now you're good. Oh, <laughs> no, sorry, we can't hear you. Well, let me try to fix that. Uh, then we'll go with Juan Carlos. Maybe you can tell us a bit about your side okay. before we fix Lucila's microphone. Do you hear me? Yeah. Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay. No, uh, I think the 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 difference um, for for the future is uh, the decisions uh, had to be more uh, intersectorials. No, uh, we to to involved in the decision more sectors uh, economy or uh, uh, finance or uh, working you no know? um, and, and it's, it's not just a mobility decision it's, it's a working decision for example the 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 opening time and the closing time from the shopping centers uh, or of, of the schools uh, is a decision that is not of the Ministry of uh, Economics or Education. It's a decision of the city. We have to to have a discussion between the the mobility, between the life quality, uh, and the and the the time for people, you no, know, uh, to decide which is the opening and the closing time of a lot of activities. Uh, and a second and a second difference that I think we have to apply is. Uh, the the feedback with the users you no know? um, uh, in, in this moment uh, if, if you if you see what users are are telling or are doing in his movements uh, you can you have if you have to a technological support to report the movement of the people uh, you can adjust your decisions maybe day by day about the, the offer of public transportation, about the, some cost, about the, the um, recruiting of drivers, uh, a lot of, a lot of um, uh, it's not just a theoretical uh, planification. Uh, we have to, to see what people are doing and, and telling to make the decisions. That, that's, I think that that's the, the most important difference for the future. Cool, um, Sergio? 
Yeah, I think um, there are basically two words that pretty much define everything from here on now, um, flexibility and coordination. We really uh, been facing the need to pretty much make changes every day to almost everything, which is, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty difficult. And um, we've been lucky to have a lot of uh, coordination and help uh, because, you know, of course it's different in, in every country, but uh, we have a set of rules and authorities here in the city that are different from the national government, from the uh, Ministry of Transportation, and we really need a lot of coordination, you know, uh, not only uh, vertical, horizontal, uh, like Juan Carlos was saying, this is not just a mobility or transportation issue, this is a citywide issue. Um, we have a number of uh, committees and task force with all other entities. We're looking at all of these uh, in a comprehensive way. You know, how do we reopen the economy? Uh, we're thinking at, uh, you know, we're looking at things like uh, take data from the mobility survey, segmented based on uh, the type of work that people do, see how they move, where they live, uh, how do we start opening? Um, how do they move? Uh, for example, looking at uh, economic sectors that uh, primarily or majoritarily move either by bicycle or transit and try to treat those people in a different way, try to uh, really enforce different schedules, not only for public entities, but for private sectors. So there's a need for a huge uh, level of coordination. And of course here, uh, it's very important to have the support of entities, you know, like uh, all of you guys, NUMO, GIZ, um, Euroclima, everybody, because you guys are becoming kind of like our uh, intellectual and our strong arm, you know, because uh, while we look to the left and try to put up a fire, uh, we look to the right and ask you guys for help and data and everything, and that has been really helpful. So again, uh, to me, the most important thing right now is uh, to have the flexibility to change everything, really everything, even uh, our mass, our most uh, bottom line assumptions about how the city should move and to be coordinated across all levels, vertical, horizontal, and uh, transversal. Excellent, thanks Sergio. Uh, we're gonna try with Lucila again, maybe your microphone works right now. Hi, now it's working? Yes, Yes. perfect. So I am totally agree with my colleagues. Uh, I believe that uh, we are facing something we, we don't know what, what is going to happen. We don't know when it's going to end. Uh, so we need a, a, strong, a strong coordination uh, between the different areas inside the government and with, with, we are a local government, so we need also to coordinate with the national governments. And it's very important also to be in touch with the other go cities in our case, uh, to understand what they are doing. Uh, we are facing challenge uh, every day um, from the sustainability, the finance sustainability of the systems because the, we are losing uh, passengers and we have to, someone has to pay for, the, for that to the subways and the buses and also for the, the social distances that we have to guarantee for the next, we don't know if we have to do it for three, six or 10 months. So we things are changing very fast and we need a, a coordination and we, we need to have very fresh and deep uh, information about what, about what is going good in other cities and what is going bad. So to understand and and change. Excellent. Thank you, Lucila. So we're just uh, wrapping up right now. We're uh, at time. So I want to thank the three of you uh, very, very much for all this information you have shared with all of us. As I mentioned, we're over 330 people in this webinar. So hopefully the information you are sharing with a lot of the people here will be useful to others uh, who are doing. Again, we didn't have really much time to go through all the questions. Um, so I'll share those questions with you and uh, we'll figure out, figure out a way to get them to the, to the attendees. Um, and I would also like to thank uh, our partners, to me, GIZ, uh, Euroclima, Mobilize Your City, uh, for all our support. And as I mentioned from the start, this is just the first webinar in a series of webinars that we will be doing. 
So stay tuned uh, for the next one, which will be happening in two weeks. Um, so thanks everyone and um, have a good rest of your days.